Hello YouTubers. Today we're going to talk about big end bearings. Now, it's not really a particularly a big job, but a scary job like most people say. There's just a couple of things you need to know, but they're not really big. Obviously, we've done the video on how to take the sump down, so that's obviously the first thing. Now, these are your big end bearings. You see, them. there's one, two, three, four. And they're basically what connects, they're the con rods, and then above that is your pistons. Now what you're really looking for, the, on this particular engine there's a tick, it's ticking. And when they're really bad, it can be slightly a, a banging noise. Uh, and if you take the sump down, if you've got play up and down, that's what you really need to be aware of. They are supposed to move side to side a little bit. But if you can hear that noise, see, these are jamming, this is a problem. Hopefully you can hear that noise. Now, not supposed to be making that noise and there's too much movement, but what's actually happening here is they're going to one side, these are jamming. You should be able to move these by your hand, but I can't do it. So it's actually jamming. Now you can see that's what you're supposed to be able to do, move it like that, but this one is jamming on both sides. Like I said, you don't mind a little bit of movement side to side, but it's the movement up and down you have to worry about. Again, okay, not going to be able to see it on camera, but I can feel this in my fingers, the movement up and down. And also this one's banging. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take these off, renew them, and uh, your engine should be a lot quieter if you've got this particular problem, of course. Now, just if you hopefully hear the noise it's making, Now, if you could hear that noise, obviously, that noise is then being um, echoed through the engine, which is making, obviously, a horrible noise. So we're going to show you how to take them off and replace them. Right, that's all okay. Hello, YouTubers. Right, today, we're going to talk about big end bearings. So your big ends, simple, little shell bearings. And there's the rest of them. That's all they are. Now, a lot of people say these are hard to do and stuff, they're not. There's just a couple of things you need, and your best friend today is going to be Mr. Tipex. That is so important. So, these are your shells. Just simple little bits of metal. Now, what you need to do is. For a start you want to do one at a time, so only take one, one off at a time. And also what you want to do is you want to mark everything. Now at the minute we've got cylinder one and cylinder four in the down position. So you're going to do them two first, then you turn the crank and you bring the other two down. But what you want to do is, you want to mark everything. So you want to mark which way it goes, so put a little arrow there. And I know now that that faces that way, which is very important. And I'm also gonna mark one of the bolts. So I'm gonna mark it there and put some tipex there. So I know that bolt goes to that side and that case goes go that way. That's the most important thing. So we're just gonna undo these two and then we'll show you that. Now, the most important thing is you have different types of sockets. This has got six sides, you can see that. And this has got 12 sides. Now basically it just means it's got 12 sides in. If you look in the bolt here, you'll see how it's got 12 sides. Look at the bolt next to it, has only got six flat sides. This one's got 12. So that's the most important thing. Getting the right size, see how that fits on nicely. And if it was the, the other side, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit on because it, there's not enough sides. So this will allow you to get the bolts off without doing any damage at all. And they simply, just crack off. And like I said, the most important thing is mark everything. It's one bolt. Second bolt. Now 
Now, that's all it is. Just a half moon. And like I said, I have marked everything and I'm going to leave that on the floor on a cardboard box like that. Because the other thing is you want to make sure you don't get any grit. Any, any crap or grit in there. That's one of the shells. That's all it is. Now if you can just see there, you can just see a slight... Can you see that through camera? A slight rubbing on one side. And that's basic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure this against the new one. But I'm happy to see that I can see a slight rubbing on that side. Which at least we know with some sort of wear. And that's all that happens. It just sits in there. Simple as that. And you have one on the top. Simple YouTubers. Simples. And now that's cleaned up. You can see there's like a polish mark on, on both sides of there. That's the new one. Now they might physically look the same. But you, you only need point of a mil, point two of a mil, point three of a mil for it to really make a difference. Which is so thin you wouldn't physically be able to see it with your eyes. Now we've measured these on a vernier gauge, on a digital vernier gauge, and there's about half a mil in the in the two, which half a mil doesn't sound a lot, but when you're talking about tolerances in your bottom end, half a mil might as well be a mile. Now the other thing you want to check is before you put them on is make sure there's no damage on the crank, and that's easy. You just literally wipe it. Can you see that? Can you see? You literally wipe it and you can't really see any signs of damage. Any scratching, it looks nice and smooth. That's what you're looking for. So that's a good sign. And then to get the top one off, you literally push it up. I'm pushing up with my hands and what I'm doing now is actually pushing the piston up into the block. And then this is a bit trickier, but if you can get your hands on this one and just slide this one off. Like I said, this one is trickier to do compared to the other one. Now, a bit fiddly, and now I've got it off. And now there she comes. And same again, this one more so is showing signs of wear right on the edges. And this one's all the way across. But again, you can actually see slightly more wear in the middle there. Is that showing up on camera? So yeah. That's good sign in one way because um, we know there's definitely a problem with this. Like I said, what you could hear on this engine is this was slack. It was banging side to side. Now there should be a little bit of movement side to side but not as much as what we had. And if you've got movement up and down a lot then there's a good chance at a lot of movement now, there's, a, there's a good chance your crankshaft is actually scored or worn in some sort of way. We only had a tiny bit of movement, hardly any to be fair, but our movement was too much side to side and it was banging against the case. So again, you just want to check, and you can literally check with your finger, you can feel if there's any score marks. You want this to be so smooth, and there isn't any score marks, and obviously you can also check on this if there's a hell of a lot of score marks really dinted in, then you know you've necessarily got a problem. So all we do now is literally put the new ones on, and we're just doing it one at a time. So then we're going to move to number four next, then we're going to turn the crank until number two and three is down, and we're going to do one of them. But like I said, mark everything. Everything is marked. It's simple. So I know that that has to go towards the back. Them two bolts are fine. Make sure there's no uh, grit or anything in them. And we'll even tell you the uh, proper um, torques. Because you need to torque these back up. Simple. What I'm going to do is, I've just got some new oil and I'm just going to spread a smear of oil on both sides. It just helps. Now this is the trickier one, because this one we're going to have to get over the top and try and sit it down. It's possible, it's just a bit fiddly. So a little bit of oil doesn't really, a little bit of lube, you know what I mean? A little bit of lube. Can't go wrong with a bit of lube. Oh naughty. Now, this is a bit tricky. But I tend to leave it rested on the actual crank and then I'll bring, I'll try and bring the, the conrod down to meet it. So I've got the conrod here now, I'm bringing it down. And it's now pushed down, it's now pushed down. And then you just want to make sure you've definitely, like now at the minute, 
I don't know if you can see that, but it's not perfectly lined up. I've actually got it a bit to one side. So we need to lift it up slightly and just move it until it lines up perfectly. Now I think that's it. Still a slight bit off. Oh. Now I've got it. I've got it perfect now. <coughs> Hopefully you can see it on camera. This is the conrod here, and this shiny bit is the new shell. Now that's actually flat. So the bottom one is, is even easier. It's the same thing, but obviously you can see what you're doing. So again, a bit of oil on your finger. A bit of fresh oil on your finger. Just rub it on the top and the bottom. Make sure you get it all. And then sit it in there. As you can see, and what I was trying to explain on the bottom one is, you see how that's not, how it's sticking out too long there. So you just have to make sure, when you're doing the top one, you just make sure you get it level. And as you put it up, you can just press it with your hand, look, just like that. See, that's moving. So I just press it with my hand so I know that that's level, nice and level there. You can see that. So it's just nice and level across there. And just push it in the middle. Now, like I said, I've got my arrows so I know exactly where it goes. And all I'm going to do, again, make sure you put them both in hand tight first. Don't put one in and don't screw the, screw the one in all the way because you could damage the thread going in because you might not be 100% lined up. So you just want to screw it in by hand. Like that, screw the other one in. Now that is literally as simple as that. We've got to tighten that up and torque it up and repeat that process another three times. And that's your big end bearings done. It's not rocket science, it's not hard. Some people get scared of it because, oh, it's my big end bearings, you know, it's, it, it's not, it really isn't difficult. Providing you've got no damage on your crank, your bottom crank, and you can tell that from your old shells. If your shells are like in, in two halves, then you're gonna have to get oversized bearings, get your crank ground down. Um, if they like what ours was, just a little bit warm, you're golden. So we're just going to screw these up by hand now. What I'm going to do is get my ratchet. Now all I'm doing now is I'm just screwing these home, but I'm going to screw them up evenly. I'm just going to knit them until they're knit. Now they're nipped. Now what we're going to do is get the torque wrench out and torque them properly and then we're sorted. Now, um, just another quick thing. On some cars you have to renew the bolts. Some cars you don't, it just depends. And you can check it all out on the internet and you can find out all your specifications. According to my computers and stuff here, it's saying we don't need to, um, we don't need to uh, replace them. I've done loads of these, so like I said, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But it's given me the Titans. The first one is 20 Newtons, stage 2 is 30 Newtons, and stage 3 is 90 degrees. Now I'll show you what that means. So you need to get a torque wrench and set it to 20 Newtons first. And with a torque wrench, once you tighten, it clicks once you get to the right Newtons. So, now, hear that? That's clicked. So that means we've got 20 newtons. You do the second bolt. Click again. Now it's saying stage two is 30 newtons. So we move it up, Just twist it until we get to 30 newton meters, lock it, and do the same thing again. Now, 30, and that's 30. Now we need another little gadget and we do a 90 degrees. Now I've seen some people guess 90 degrees. That's up to yourself, but I personally wouldn't. We've got a little digital 
digital machine that, that, that tells us that for us. So I'll just show you that now next. Now, we did we did start again. We have this little gadget here, and what you can do with it, you can set your angles to whatever you need. We need 90 degrees, and based the way this works, as you turn, the degrees move up. It starts beeping, and then it you get that beep when you when you've hit your mark, and then you reset and you go to your next one. Now this one's quite expensive. You can get cheaper ones uh, for a couple of quid. And there's a like a little clock almost, and as you're turning it, it moves on a little clock. You don't particularly need something like this, just this is the one I happen to have. Now, this is a half inch still with the 11th, 12 sided socket on, so it's just a slightly bigger. It's easier with a slightly bigger ratchet to do the 90 degrees. Now, I've changed to the, to the little extension because uh, the big one was just getting in the way. Set off. Now you can turn it upside down, put it on, reset it, and wait for the. Now that's one. Reset it. Do the second one. Now, quite hard doing that from underneath. So that's it, that's one done. Now we have to repeat that process three times, but it is as simple as that. And hopefully now, we can see what we're getting is we're still getting movement, but that's normal. But it's not jamming and it's moving a lot freer. There's no play up or down. What was happening before is you can see from here, it jams. Like this one's jammed. I can't move that with my hands. I can't move that at all. This one, it's just moving normal, but it's not jamming. So we know we definitely had a problem with these. And we now know that that's good. Now I don't know how well it's going to come through camera, but I don't know if you can hear that. Hopefully you can. You can see how much that's moving, but it's banging. This one we've just done doesn't move anywhere near as much, and it's not it's not banging, and I can't make it bang. This one actually gets stuck now it's stuck now I can't move that oh I've just moved it's actually stuck so we know we're on the right track now what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the oil pickup here so we can get the other two pistons so it's just four bolts on it You don't particularly have to remove this, but it just makes your life a little bit easier, so you might as well. And the other good thing is, once you've removed it, you can also clean it. Uh, if there's any crap or anything in there, it just means your pump can pump your engine oil through a lot easier. One more bolt. Got three hands, by the way, as you can see, everybody. Special. <laughs> now, now that's done. And just in case you're wondering, that's your dipstick there. So when obviously your dipstick comes through a little bit there, so that's that's where the old dippy stick comes through. And with this now, what you can do is you can actually clean inside there because this is where it sucks the oil up and puts it up through to top of your engine. So you can clean that now. It's on. Now, what we need to do is, we obviously need to get these two pistons down. And we should actually be able to turn it by hand. So what I'm doing is now, I've got my hand on the bottom crank, the fan belt's off, and I'm literally, see, you can turn that by hand. And another good thing to do is, once it's up there, you can actually just check these again and make sure, see if there's any things there, all good. Now, 
can hear the old compression. Now, I've just turned that by hand. And again, now, that's the you can hear that. And this one, now, that one's jammed again. And like I said, the other two, they're not doing that now. So again, mark this with the arrow, mark them, take them down, put them up, jobs are good. Like a job in the ice street. Now we're on the last one, just one more to do. So you can just come under it. You can see how I've marked everything again. This is a new one. This is an old one, which is jammed again. Now, I mean, I just can't move it for this one. It's nice, no movement up there. It's nice to be moving. So there's been film doing this last one, just so you know again. So again, you mark it with an arrow. Now it doesn't much, obviously matter which way your arrow is, as long as you know which way your arrow is. That's all that really matters. Now obviously if you also, if you're putting in new bolts, you don't have to obviously mark them, you just put the new bolts in anyway at all. But again, you can check out on the old interweb if you need new bolts. There's one. Two. Now, slide this down. Now, you can see, well, I mean, this, this is the worst one we've had. And I'll show you that now in a second. That really is bad. So what I'm gonna do is, I know that one goes there. I know that one goes there. And just quickly check that. And that all looks good. No shiny wear marks there, which is a good sign. Now this one, this is the one that was making the most noise out of all four of them. And this is number three. Cylinder number three. Now, if you can see that shiny wear mark, and it might not show on camera, but there's a load of little scuffs inside in the middle as well. Now again, get the top one out, so push it up like that, push it to the side. I'm actually pushing the piston up through the block. You can see it here, look. So what I'm actually doing is, pushing the piston up through the block. Move it to the side. Taking out this. That doesn't seem as bad to be fair to it. No, that's not well. Obviously in the middle again. So I mean, you're gonna expect certain way to work out. So again, then with your finger, check that there's no roughness. Even check the oil, that there's no bits or grit or anything in the oil. Push the con rod to the side. So you come up here, Johnny. Can you see that? See the con rod moving? Now, you can see the con rod moving there. Push it to the side, and again, you can actually see, but check with your finger to make sure there's no grit or anything in. And as you can see, that there. Just, let's get it there. You can see you're moving the con rod to the side, and that all looks good. Now these are the last two bearings. Again, dip your finger in the oil and just give a good, a good lube. You can't beat lube. You know what I mean? Now we get tricksy, eh? You want some lube, yeah? Yeah. 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 It's a bearing. A bearing? No. No. Okay. Good too, wouldn't you? Ah. Again. Just do it the reverse way. So, put the bearing on, slip it on the top, and it kind of. Then grab the piston, slide it down into the bearing and onto the crank. Now, what you want to make sure is it's nice and level. So, before you push it down home, just make sure the bearing is in it straight for a start, and it's level. Now, this one is a little bit twisted, so I'm just going to move it up. Push it in with my fingers. Again, you're not gonna be able to see this on camera, but it's all to do with feel. When you're doing it yourself, it become a lot, make a lot more sense and a lot easier. Oh, this is a bit tricky now, this one. Typical, the others are gone really quickly and the one you film again, plays up. 
So again, that's nice and two. The new bearing. Same thing again, I'm gonna put it down onto it in the middle. And like I said, what you wanna be careful of is when you slide it, it's not, obviously that's too much of an angle, but you can actually slide it down and it can be slightly off-centered like that, you see that? And if you was to put that top one on, you can actually damage that. So you don't wanna push the nuts up and screw them until this is perfectly level. And you can just do it with your hands. Just push it in, make sure it's in the middle, and just like that, it's just between my fingers. I now know that's good to go. And again, with my marks on my bolts, I know that one's that side, and I mark that one that side. By hand, screw them up by hand, both of them. Just like that. Now, they're both as tight as I can do it with my fingers. Get the torque wrench, put it to 20 newtons. I'm gonna slide that to 20 newtons, lock it at the bottom. You'll hear it click. Hear that click? Same with this one. Hear that click again. Now, stage two is 30 newtons. Let's put it to 30 newtons. Lock it, hopefully you can see that. Again, wait for the click. And click. Now, the last and third stage is 90 degrees with our little machine here. I'm going to need a little, uh, just in the way of the exhaust. Now it's quite difficult to do it from underneath, so a lot easier when you're on top doing a head. Anyway, so now I'm on there now. Reset my cap, gauge to zero. And turn. We can hear the bleeps. Now, Obviously the advantage of this one is you don't really need to be looking at it. You just wait. It gives you fast bleeps when you're close and bleeps and turns red. Now, that's it. It's easy as that. Now all you've got to do is obviously put your sump back on, pull your oil in and then hope you fix your problem. We're going to do the sump putting back on another video. I'm going to put all the links down so you can get all, all, all the same links. But that is basically it. Simple as that. All four are now done. And if you remember the noise from, the, from this one, that's it. It's not getting jammed. There's a nice bit of movement side to side. There's no movement at all up or down. And they're not getting jammed. And what you can also do if you want to just quickly check, again, just turn it by hand. I'm going to turn it by hand and you can just keep going all the way and check just to make sure there's no movement, they're not getting jammed. Wow, my hands are full of oil, not making this easy, but oh, I can't do it, my hands are full of oil. Now my hands are just too full of oil, so I'm going to turn it with a little ratchet. But basically, you can turn it and just check all the way around. And when the other ones are coming down, that everything is fine. So I can check them again. And, yeah, that's nice. No movement there. That's nice. It's no harm just to check, just to spin it by hand a few times, just to make sure nothing's locking. Because obviously by hand, you'll know if, if, if you've got a problem here and the engine locks, if you were to start it, you could do an awful lot of damage to your engine. So if you turn it by hand, just a few turns. Now you obviously, like obviously it's fighting against me now because that's the compression, but that's a good sign. You can actually hear it hissing as well. 
What I mean is if it actually locks, so it goes bang and you cannot turn it anymore. Then you know you've got a problem somewhere and you don't want to start your engine because you're going to do an awful lot of damage. Oh, I just slipped off there. So it's definitely no harm and very good. Just to turn it a few times. And that's it. It's as simple as that. You just need to get to know on your car if you need to replace the bolts or not. Again, the internet will tell you. You need the right torques for your bolts as well because that's very important. And obviously, when you get the parts, you can just stick them yourself. Now, obviously, it takes a good few hours to do this. We're doing it on a lift, which makes it a lot easier. You can do it on the floor, but fucking hell, you're really going to know about it. Take your sump off, replace them, put your sump back on, fresh oil, like a job in the ice stream. Catch you for the next one.